What's up with the gang? It's your boy, Josh. Back with another video, man. And today we got Young Boy, Real Killer or Fake Gangster. Now, uh, this is a six hour long documentary. No, sir. Trap Laura Ross. We did King Von. I think we got to like, we did like four videos of King Von, but six hours long. So what we gonna do is we probably gonna do 30 minutes. Yeah, 30 minutes each. Cause we not, well he not. I could really sit through the whole thing. Probably, well not, probably like two hours max. But yeah, hey, so go ahead, subscribe right now. So y'all can get part two, part three, part four. But yeah, we finna get straight into it. Hey, right, subscribe for part one, part two, part three, part four, part. We probably gonna do part. 30. Yeah. So, if you know, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, follow on Instagram, give me the 20k on Instagram, 200k on here. Let's get straight to it, gang. Warning. This video contains themes of violence, death, and gang activity. The purpose of this video is to provide an educational account of historical events in the mainstream music industry. No disrespect is intended. This video does not intend to glorify or glamorize the gang lifestyle. Every effort has been made to remove anything from this video that goes against YouTube's community guidelines, including swearing and violence. But if you'd like to see a fully uncut version of this video with everything I can't show you on YouTube, then head on over to How much more I could do again? Ross, where you can watch all of my biggest documentaries uncut for just two bucks. But if you're not into that, just hit the subscribe button and enjoy the rest of the video. Thank you. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Over the last he's, he's, he's really smart. Huh? Have you well, seen we him before? We can't be this too much, huh? Has he Not, have I seen it? Uh, uh, no, have you seen him before? Yeah, we did the King Von one. Okay, he, okay. So, I get the reason why I'm asking this is because I'm curious as to whether or not it's true. No, well, I'm pretty sure he done his research though. Okay, but is this going to okay? I guess bottom line is that does YB endorse this as being true slash oh, authentic? Know. Because sometimes what folk will do, they'll put together their own compilation about what they they you know how they think a thing is or should be, whatever the case may be. But it's 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 like a bunch of other people trying to tell your story story that haven't consulted with you and, and they they get facts and all this kind yeah. of stuff wrong and. If it's gonna be six hours, my thing is that I I'd, I'd like for it to be legit. Well, we can see. Is it real? Being or able fake? to see, be, us being, we're not gonna be able to judge if you don't know. There's been few rappers that have generated as much excitement oh, God, oh. and controversy. Time out. This is the last time I'm probably, but this is really good for you. Now you can get like the that right. That's what I was thinking. But see, I'm, and and that's another reason why I was asking that question because what I don't want is for it to be a bunch of sterilized stuff that's not necessarily uh, uh, on point. No, you can't, it can't be a we'll see. Well, I'm just the saying like... The thing is, like if, if not, if YB were to say, okay, yeah, you know, he, he does do a fair depiction of, of who, how, and what I am, I can rock with it, but I don't want to sit through six hours of, of some junk that somebody has conjured up. His music is personal, thought-provoking, and violent in equal measure. He's one of the few artists who can top the Billboard charts with music all about killing, death, and destruction. But his ability to communicate the stark realities of life growing up in the dangerous slums of Baton Rouge have inspired people all over America and the world at large. Youngboy's experiences in the gang-infested slums of Louisiana, where it's kill or be killed, inspired a generation of downtrodden youngsters to struggle through the pain too. Because despite losing family members and being the target of numerous assassination attempts, Youngboy has always managed to come out on top. Not just surviving, but beating the odds and coming back bigger every single time. It's rare to find an artist who attracts this much love and hate all at the same time. And Youngboy's thugged out survival anthems for the streets have made him one of the most beloved artists in history. But his influence has a dark side too. Because some might say that his aggressive murder anthems are inspiring a generation of lost teenagers to slide and resort to violence just like he had to. But can Youngboy really be blamed? 
when basketball player Ja Moran ended up in hot water for flashing a gun in a strip club to Youngboy's music, many people suggested that this was Youngboy's fault. And considering just how many lives seem to have been lost as a direct result of Youngboy's career, whether it's the murder of rival Baton Rouge rapper G-Money, to the slaying of Youngboy's beloved manager Big Dump, or even the killing of Chicago rap legend King Von, seemingly a self-defense shooting, the result of Von trying to fight one of Youngboy's friends, to say Youngboy and his NBA crew are dangerous would be an understatement. But is the group of people that Youngboy surrounds himself a gang of loose cannons shooting first and asking questions later, or are they just really a family of youngsters with a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity that they would put their lives on the line to protect? Over the course of his career, so many people have died that Youngboy even refers to himself as the murder man, and claiming in numerous songs to have been the direct cause of as many as seven murders in his hometown. Over the years, many people have questioned the authenticity of Youngboy's gangster image. You got cap in your raps. Youngboy talking about on this song, bro. In spite of all of the violence surrounding his career, in 2022, Youngboy had a change of heart, perhaps coming the result of reflecting on all of the destruction and pain that had been caused by his music career, or as a result of years of legal battles that have seen Youngboy endlessly confined to a cell or on house arrest. Because recently, he's been calling to stop the violence pledging in interviews to stop promoting murder. It and could be just because he's, he's and even growing up and maturing. Sure. The conflict with his most hated rivals in Baton Rouge, with Youngboy's crew even sharing the stage with their mortal enemy Fredo Bang for a special charity concert aiming to stop the violence. But that said, even these now, see, have been that's, that, that's right that's right there. That right there is gangster. Violence, that's Boy smooth. continues to drop violent murder anthems back to back. So the $50 million question remains unanswered. Is Youngboy really a grave digger? the self-proclaimed murder man of Baton Rouge, really serious about stopping the violence? Or is this all just a ploy to try and avoid the responsibility for convincing a generation of teenagers to pick up a gun and get active in the streets? Well, today we're going to take a closer look at the murders, the music, and the man, and decide once and for all, is young boy really as dangerous as they say he is? Are you gonna die? 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 But I ain't dumb though, you hear me? And them people who play that role to y'all, them just know I ain't dumb. The people who really know me, they know I ain't dumb, you hear me? How the f I came this far? You think I came this far about being dumb? Oh my. Cracks in your walls, uneven floors, these are warning signs that your home's foundation may be in. Today's story takes place Louisiana in the state of Louisiana. Fast. Louisiana is in the United States' Deep South, a historic region of the U.S. with a dark history. The Deep South has had deep ties to the historic slave trade, with these particular states like Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and Georgia historically being heavily dependent on the plantation system, which saw black people kidnapped from their native lands in Africa and put to work against their will in cotton fields for the benefit of white Americans. Even after the Confederate states lost the Civil War and slavery was abolished, racism continued to cast a shadow over Louisiana for many years. Attempts were made to restrict free black people from voting, and racist organizations like like the White League were formed in Louisiana to terrorize, intimidate, and target the black community there. Eventually, after World War II, in the face of the civil rights movement, black people in Louisiana finally begun to exercise their right to vote. And in 1960, this saw the establishment of groups like the Louisiana State Sovereignty Commission with an aim to battle racial segregation in the state, particularly in schools. During these years of segregation, it's believed that many African Americans fled Louisiana to states like California, seeking better treatment and opportunities. However, analysis by William Frey suggested that in in decades that followed, due to better civil rights in Louisiana, many black migrants were actually attracted back to the state. But despite these improvements, however, Louisiana still remained a difficult place to grow up black through the 90s and the noughties. The state's incarceration rates have been at the very top in the world for decades now. And although black people are a minority in the state of Louisiana, the majority of the population in correctional facilities have been black. 
Louisiana and you can boy, some of the arguments happen as a result of this kind of these kind of stats too. But Moreover, the devastating it is what it is. Hurricane Katrina and subsequent flooding left tens of thousands of Louisiana residents stranded. Do you remember Hurricane Katrina? Disproportionately African American. And the poor efforts to rescue these black people in danger had many people questioning if the state really even cared about their black citizens. George Bush doesn't care about black people. Now look, you might be wondering, what the hell does all of this have to do with Youngboy? Well, in my opinion, <laughs> it's important to understand the history of where he comes from, to understand the environment that created okay, the man. That's well, a fair way of... ...challenges of, of growing up as a young black man... Con ...contextualizing that. But that said, there's also plenty of positive influences stemming from Youngboy's Louisiana upbringing. Despite the state's difficult history when it comes to slavery and civil rights, over the years, the state's multiculturalism would become an asset, spawning creative and artistic communities. Louisiana has a long and rich history when it comes to music. In the early 1800s, the influx of enslaved Africans brought with them a diverse array of musical traditions and talents. Musical traditions which merged with the existing French, Spanish, and Native American influences in Louisiana. The fusion of these diverse cultural <coughs> elements led to the birth of unique musical <coughs> styles such as Creole music and jazz. Then, during the Civil War, music would play a significant role in both the North and the South. In Louisiana, Confederate songs and abolitionist tunes were composed, reflecting the region's divided sentiments on the issue. Some people wanted slavery to end, and their ops wanted it to continue. And you could probably argue that these might represent some of the earliest examples of diss songs, with soldiers on both sides ah. of the Civil War actually playing music that would hype up their troops and boost morale to prepare them for battle. After the Civil War, as time would go on, Louisiana creatives would continue... I'm curious as to how you view that. Blues music is believed to have originated in the Deep South in the late 1800s and early 1900s. The African-American communities in New Orleans are credited with pioneering jazz music in the early 1910s. And in the 1950s, more new musical genres emerged, like Swamp Pop, where young Cajuns and Creoles would combine traditional French Louisiana music with New Orleans-style rhythm and blues and country and western music, as well as the more low-tempo swamp blues originating in the black communities of southwest Louisiana. Into the 50s and 60s, the civil rights movement would further impact Louisiana's music scene, as African-American musicians leveraged their talents to amplify the call for racial equality, often using their platforms to shed light on the struggles that they had faced. R&B and soul music with their origins in gospel and blues would become vehicles for expressing the aspirations of the African-American community. And then of course, as hip-hop emerged in the 80s and boomed through the 90s, Manny a whole Fresh. of aspirational southern rappers would emerge from Louisiana's big cities. In New Orleans, modern rap was pioneered Master by Martin P and his No Limit clique, later being taken to brave new heights in hip-hop's bling era Lil by Wayne. the Cash Money Records, headed by Birdman and his prodigy Lil Wayne, who would arguably go on to become one of the greatest rappers of all time and my personal favorite. And while the flashy antics <laughs> of bling rappers might come across to some as tasteless, others would be inspired by these emerging black role models who were showing the world through artistry that a persecuted black man in the Deep South could become a multi-millionaire and build generational wealth off the back of sharing their lived experience through music. Now things still aren't perfect, but the success of rap music in the Deep South represents a triumph over repression to me. And I'm telling you all of this because all of this history is very important context. Because the social circumstances that persisted in Louisiana over hundreds of years all led up to a single moment in time, where the perfect circumstances existed to create one of the modern day's most exciting and controversial music artists. People in Louisiana have been using their music to express their pain and tell their perspective on life for hundreds of years. And Not just Louisiana, Louisiana though. One voice stands out above all others. The voice of a young boy who experienced one of the harshest upbringings modern day Louisiana had to offer. And that young boy was able to put all of his pain, trauma, and triumphs into his music. Modern day music that is still unmistakably Southern. So, now you know the city, let's take a closer look at that young boy, the young boy. If you edit video in Final Cut Pro, then this is for you. Okay. We've changed over 50,000 filmmakers lives. What do you think thus far? Hmm? What do you think so far? Youngboy was born to Trail Deshaun Gordon in 1999, and over the years, he's been Mystic known by many names, NBA yeah. Youngboy, Youngboy Never Broke Again, Top, YB, AI Youngboy, and the list goes on. Now, Youngboy by no means had it easy as a kid. He grew up on the north side of Baton Rouge, more specifically, North 38th Street and Chippewa Street. 
This led to another nickname that appears frequently oh, on Young Boy's songs. Oh, okay, 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 that makes way too much sense. In fact, Young Boy's legendary lyrics about 38th and Chippewa, where he grew up, has even attracted super fans who would film themselves driving down the very streets that Young Boy would play on as a child. But life on 38th Street was not kind to a young Young Boy. His father, Jeffrey Staden, wasn't in his life growing up as he had apparently been sentenced to 55 years in jail when young boy was just eight years old. This monster sentence was punishment for the armed robbery of a Baton Rouge convenience store on December the 1st, 2009. Young boy's father, along with three other men, one of whom was his brother Dallas, had apparently robbed Albie's convenience store on North Sherwood Forest. The robbery got ugly, and young boy's father shot a store clerk in the leg during this altercation. This would earn him charges of armed robbery and attempted first degree murder. He would plead not guilty, and after a jury trial, the state would find him guilty as charged on two counts, getting himself mm. 10 years for the robbery and 50 years for the attempted murder. Ooh. Many years later, Youngboy would even reference his father's incarceration, rapping on the song Cross Me that it was actually his uncle, his father's brother, that was there for the robbery, who snitched and got him 55 years. I remember talking about that. As well that. as referencing his father's plight <laughs> on the song Where the Love At, where he raps wow. that he prays he doesn't become an alcoholic like his father, as well as paying respects and suggesting that his father needs a second chance at life because robbing people for their money was how he was trying to provide for his family. It seemed like both sides of Youngboy's family had a history of robbery as his uncle on his mother's side was also an alleged known robber in Baton Rouge. However, unfortunately, he would suffer a worse fate than Youngboy's father. Andy Golden, the uncle who Youngboy referenced a couple of times in his music, was apparently shot in the head during a robbery attempt. Youngboy Ooh. mentions on the track Acquittal how he heard stories about how his uncle was shot in the head, implying that their relationship was most likely non-existent if Youngboy had to rely on stories to hear all about his life. As well as in the track R.I.P. Lil Dave, when Youngboy speaks of his uncle who got shot in the head and died while hitting a lick. Further references to this are heard on the track 38 Baby, when Youngboy outright declares that Andy Golden was his uncle, which means that robbery is in his genes. I mean, just take a second to think about the situation that Youngboy was dealing with here as a child. His father is serving 55 years for robbery, with one uncle who snitched on him, and his other uncle was also a prolific robber who got shot in the head and killed during a robbery. All this would leave him as a lost child with no father figure who even saw robbery as part of his DNA. That's a heavy situation for an eight-year-old kid to be dealing with. And with no father figure in his life, the young boy would have to rely on the females in his family to look after him and make him a man. Despite his mother Sharonda Golden being alive, she apparently wasn't there for young boy at a child at all times. He's so, talked about his grandfather, he Papa. His loving grandmother, Alice Golden, but unfortunately, Youngboy's grandmother would pass away too, leaving him devastated for years to come. Youngboy would open up about the loss of his grandmother in a Billboard interview in 2023, calling her his protector. After losing his grandmother, with his father in jail and his mother out of the picture, Youngboy wound up in a group home, and it would be here that he would be subject to physical abuse and bullying. He would later explain in a Billboard really interview that, that it was this experience of being targeted in the group home that led him to cultivate his own dark and violent side for protection. Clearly, young boy had to fight for survival as a child. In fact, he actually broke his neck whilst he was wrestling as a toddler. This was a serious injury which required him to wear a full neck and head brace whilst his spine healed. This was a corrective procedure which left him with the three iconic head scars that he has on his head to this day. An everyday reminder on his face of just one painful incident that he endured as a child. And something his enemies are still quick to use against him with the hurtful moniker Dent Head often being levied against him. Youngboy had gone through so many traumatic experiences as a child, it's unsurprising that he would grow up dealing with a lot of pain. But even outside of the tragedies in his own family, Youngboy would also suffer losses outside the home. When he was just age 10, he would end up losing one of his closest childhood friends to gun violence. As a child, Youngboy was friends with another boy who was around six years older than him, a boy by the name of David Cobb, aka Lil Dave. On March the 27th, 2010, a memorial picnic was being held at a park on Woodpecker Street in Scotlandville in Baton Rouge. This event was intended to honor the memory what were you of doing in 2010? who had lost their mm -hmm. lives what were you doing in 2010? But unfortunately, the very mm -hmm. thing that this event was intending <laughs> to shed a light on would end up happening that same day. Because at some point, a fight broke out and bullets started flying. One of those bullets hit 16-year-old David Cobb in the spine, and despite there being hundreds of witnesses, this case would ultimately go on unsolved partly due to a fear in the community of retaliation against those who would be seen as a snitch for speaking to law enforcement. As a result, the family of Lil Dave would be left grieving without closure, heartbroken that their child lost his life at an event that was intended to honor teens losing their lives to gun violence. And it wasn't just Dave's family who was devastated by this loss. That's the young boy himself would be destroyed and traumatized by losing a friend to gun violence story. so young. He would go on to rap about the loss of Lil Dave 
and the effect that it had on him years later. Youngboy would rap on the song For Keeps with Rich the Kid, that Dave was killed by a chopper or machine gun and that he wishes he could call him. Also, on the aptly named song Homicide, Youngboy expresses his desire to get revenge and kill the person who took Dave's life, as well as saying that he knows Lil Dave is still with him on the song Poor One. On the song Cage Feeling, Youngboy speaks about the death of Lil Dave, saying that this loss turned his heart cold and made him become a killer. The fact that Youngboy was no stranger to loss of friends and family at such a young age just goes to show you the kind of environment he was growing up in and the factors that coerced him into the kind of lifestyle he would go on to live. But Youngboy was already being influenced by the streets. He would actually later rap in the song Life that Lil Dave was the person who taught him how to smoke, shoot dice, and get money for sneakers. He also said that he felt life began getting crazy for him when Lil Dave was killed. In the song Better Man, Youngboy would claim to be tormented by the image of Lil Dave's murder in his mind. And on the track How I'm Living, he would vow to make the people responsible bleed okay, for what okay, they did today. Okay. Later on, on the unreleased track Hold 13, See, that appeared only this, in the trailer for his hit album Top, this, Youngboy... Okay, initially when 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 you introduced me uh, to Youngboy's music, um, I remember feeling and thinking about how silly it was uh, to be even concerned about, uh, you know, about about this kid as a rapper. But what happened for me, or to me, is that, is that, see, I knew you rascals are going to be caught up in stuff like this, not as far as his lifestyle, but just caught up in rappers like this. And so... It's like, all right, so I gave it, I was patient to try to figure out uh, where y'all was coming from because nobody took the time when I was coming up to figure out, you know, what we were into. So I, I always vowed to myself that stuff like that, I wouldn't let y'all just, you know, just do whatever and come up any other kind of way. I was going to try to be an influence or just at least understand where y'all was coming from. You feel me? So, uh, so that was that was the impetus for me to try to get uh, to try to do that. But now, as I'm listening to this, I find his story that much more interesting because it comes from a uh, from a from a place that I can identify with. So, dig it. Rapper lyric, which some believe is him actually confessing that when he made his first twenty thousand dollars, he spent it on a hitman to get revenge on Lil Dave's killer. With this traumatic and personal Ooh. loss combined with his family's reputation when it came to robberies, it's no surprise then that as a young teenager, young boy dropped out of school in the ninth grade and got heavily involved in the streets, becoming a teenage robber just like his father and uncle. Young boy would later tell DJ Smalls Eyes in an interview that after his grandmother died, he started robbing himself and ultimately wound up in jail for a robbery at just age 14. I grew up taking, I grew up taking, I grew up stealing, taking from people. Like, wow. Yeah, my grandma, my grandma used to take care of me. And when my grandma died, started catching my attention at a younger age. See, I got, I booked, I got booked for robbery at um, age 14, 14, 14. Ultimately, Youngboy found himself in a youth detention center for this robbery. But perhaps this would be a blessing in disguise, as while he was incarcerated, he would claim to have found his purpose in life beginning to write music and using that as a way to express himself and cope with the pains of life, vowing to become an artist rather than a criminal. I ain't gonna say it was the best thing that happened to me. It helped me know my purpose. It helped me know what I want to do. Within them six months, I, I wrote at least like 25, 25 songs with no beat. It was basically what I was going through, how I was feeling. It helped me learn how to express myself. Young boys' family were actually <laughs> always interested in music. Youngboy claimed to have written his own obscene rap lyrics in the fourth grade, and he had apparently been taken to the studio by his mother, who herself was also an aspiring rapper. And his father had even written to him from jail, telling him that he had been writing music during his 55-year sentence, and encouraging Youngboy to focus on music too. So, upon his release from jail for robbery, Youngboy would return to 38th Street with little more than just a dream of becoming a rapper, along with a lifetime of trauma. And before he could get anywhere with his rap career, he would at least need a stable environment to live in. Luckily, he ended up finding a new place in the neighborhood to call home, with Youngboy rapping on the song Life that he met his friend 3-3 riding his bike down Chippewa, and that 3-3's mother accepted him into their home like family. According to 3-3, okay. him and Youngboy are essentially... Mm. 
I was just about to ask. Okay, so as far as three three, I never heard of him. Oh, he three. Yeah. So is he? Is he still alive? I would imagine. Are they still cool? I would imagine he, the young boy, does a lot for or or feels indebted a lot to his mom. Oh yeah. He the one. He's the one who started NBA. Never broke again. Ah. Oh. Okay, yeah. okay. He's probably gonna talk about brothers, it. Okay. Who grew up with the same mother, Monique. But Monique is really 3-3's biological mother. As we know, uh, biological she was in, in the... Okay, the okay. Due to the fact that 3-3's mother, Monique, helped raise young boy, he often refers to her as his mother as well, which would make 3-3 his adopted brother, and the two do seem to have a relationship that is stronger than most real brothers. And because of this, the two basically just say they're real brothers. You said you knew him since you were four? Because you guys are brothers, and, went, and you've yeah. been, you were born around each other, yeah. so it's like you don't have any memories of it's not like, knowing them. No, it's like, it's like, you it's know, some how, people how like that. that you, our, you know, our dad is, you don't remember me. Up, you know what I'm saying? So we got the same moms. It's okay. like, Man, really, I started making music with my brother. Just really inspired me to go in the booth because it really wasn't about me. It was really about young boy, and I was pushing him. And he, one day, he just told me, "Man, look, come do this with me." And he pushed me to go in the booth, and I just took it a liking into it. And you know, that's where it really started from. So you know, shout out YB. Meanwhile, Youngboy's relationship with his own biological mother, Sharonda, was up and down during his childhood. Years down the line, he would open up about this on the song Lonely Child from his October 2019 oh, project, AI Youngboy 2. Oh, when he says that God, he his mother, Monique, his adopted mother, he still wow. needs Sharonda. Wow, I remember that line. To the lack of I remember that. I'm going to need my Sharonda. For wow. And mental support. But anyway, okay. Out of juvenile, finding okay. a new safe space to call home. Youngboy's new spiritual brother, 3-3, would be supportive of his aspirations as a rapper. And together, this brotherly duo would get back to finessing on the streets to pay for studio time. Eventually, with Youngboy getting enough recording time in to produce a full-length musical project. And by April the 10th, 2015, Youngboy had released his first ever mixtape, Life Before Fame. This tape featured tracks like Homicide and Range Rover, which showed a 15-year-old Youngboy truly had the skills to pay the bills early on. The album begins with an intro where Youngboy mentions an affiliate of his named D-Dog catching a body. This sets the mood for the rest of the album, letting fans know straight away that Youngboy had ties with the streets, despite the fact that he was technically still a child at this point. And in the same song, he gives us an insight into his torturous relationships and the reason behind why he finds it so hard to remain faithful faithful to his partner, wow. even at age 50. In the song I Know, Youngboy begins to paint a menacing picture of his position in the local gang hierarchy, mentioning on two occasions how he can rely on another known NBA affiliate by the name of Lil Pap to go get him. A brash statement which shows that even at age 15, Youngboy was really in the streets with people around him that he could send to do dirt to. Youngboy would also share his experience with Get Back and Vengeance in this project. On the track Deal With It, he talks about how revenge was exacted on the person who killed his uncle saying that they spotted the person who killed his uncle and that Youngboy witnessed somebody put that person in a casket, and going on to say that the deceased man's brother wow. is now after him. This is an important lyric, as it shows that even back when he was just 15 years old, people were dying around Youngboy, being killed, and he was becoming a target himself, despite not being directly responsible for the violence that had played out. Elsewhere on this song, Youngboy pledges his allegiance to a group called TBG, or Top Boy Gorilla. This is the first crew or record label that Youngboy aligned himself with when he became a rapper. Though unfortunately, as is often the case in the streets, over time, as Youngboy's star rose, tension would brew between the members of TBG, arguing over who the next big rapper from the group would be. And eventually, what begun as a partnership would devolve into a deadly beef, with members of TBG picking their sides and That's then escalating into an all-out game, it, though. with people being murdered on both sides. Man. Years of heartbreak playing out on the streets and in the music. You guys know how it is when you buy a new Mac super fast at first and then pretty soon So have you seen this before? Slow down. That's when Youngboy left juvenile detention Are you learning anything or have you, rapper, you know rather than a robber, hmm? Are you learning stuff about him that you didn't know? Potential this teenage rapper really? he had. From here, a group of people from his neighborhood with ties to the music industry as well as the streets oh, he to take him under their wig. Youngboy's first mixtape, Life Before Fame, was actually released under the banner of TBG, with Youngboy and 3-3 being seen in throwback pictures rocking TBG merch. TBG stands for Top Boy Gorilla, a crew with a storied history in the wild and dangerous streets of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. TBG was supposedly started by deceased Louisiana native and affiliate of rap veteran Boosie, Little Ivy Smith. He would turn out to be the uncle of future TBG rap prospect Lit Yoshi, but more on him later. 
Now, Lil Ivy was sadly killed in an unsolved triple homicide back in 2005. However, at this early stage in the game, Youngboy was nothing more than a promising young prospect to these Baton Rouge rap OGs. The older members of TBG were looking to find the next up and coming rap rookie who could potentially be the next homegrown rap star to come out of Baton Rouge. And at the time, the real crown jewels of the TBG squad were a couple of rappers uh, known as G Money and Fredo Bang. Okay, so that's my Fredo Bang. up steam with their song iPhone 6 okay. alongside Boulevard Mel and YMM Captain. You can tell that Youngboy was truly close with the TBG crew at this point because Youngboy even appeared in the background of the iPhone 6 music video, at one point handing a Gucci bag to Fredo Bang, a moment that would honestly be inconceivable in what would later become a deadly and bitter beef. As the story goes, the TBG crew had ties to Baton Rouge's criminal underworld. Okay. And rappers and affiliates of the TBG crew were still involved in the local drug trade. Unfortunately, soon some of this street beef would end up souring things on the music side. Because the TBG crew supposedly had a beef going with another Baton Rouge crew called BBG. I guess most of, of his fans Gang understand these label, aspects to, to who he is. BBG and. and TBG were bigger Dang. enemies. With a big rumor at one point going around that young boy's Godzilla, who was affiliated with BBG, ended you up in a bitter hmm? disagreement with G Money from you can, TBG. Okay, there's been you. intense speculation over the years Boy. as to what was the exact cause of this beef. Some have suggested that Boozilla ran off with money or drugs from G Money, whilst others suggest that the whole drama was actually over a woman. Another explanation even suggests that it was actually Youngboy himself who stole money from G Money, but actually blamed the finesse on his cousin Boozilla, as Boozilla was seen on Twitter disavowing his own family at one point and G-Money seemingly indicating that this rumor was true on his diss track Industry, where he claimed that Youngboy had him looking for Boozilla with a gun and saying that Boozilla actually wanted to kill Youngboy over this whole situation. There's even an old clip circulating that showed Boozilla and BBG affiliate Baby Joe seemingly posted up with guns looking for Youngboy and saying FNBA. This was unusual because previously Boozilla had claimed to be a member of the group NBA and even at one point referred to himself as NBA Boosie. Now, I'll explain to you what NBA means in a minute, but just bear with me. Because meanwhile, as that personal beef was developing, another more professional beef was emerging between Youngboy and the TBG crew. According to some, at a certain point Youngboy got frustrated with the TBG label. This was likely due to the fact that he wasn't necessarily getting the money or shine that he thought he deserved from the crew. Okay. With their main focus being on building the careers of That's G Money and Fredo Bang, rather than investing in Youngboy. So at some point, Youngboy and 3-3 would leave TBG, starting their own crew. Initially, 3-3 and Youngboy wanted a group based on Youngboy's initials, Kentrell Golden or KG. Since KG also means kilograms, the initial idea was to call their crew Weight Gang, another reference to the drug gang. At first his name was like KG, but then we got like, that's where the Weight Gang come from. But it What did KG like, stand for? Like his initials, that's, oh, okay. that's, that's his name. But right. Weight Gang was one of the first things he had came up with. But clearly that name wasn't really hitting the spot. So later on, a few of the members <laughs> of this crew were just chilling, sitting on their porch, when Youngboy apparently vowed that he was not trying to go broke no more. To which other members of the crew agreed the same thing, with this pledge giving the crew inspiration to name themselves Never Broke Again, or NBA. Like when we was on the porch one day, it was like, we ain't trying to go broke no more. And then he was like, we ain't I ain't trying to go broke knees, so we never broke again. Like, you know what I'm saying? From day one, that's where NBA started from, like. So, the NBA crew was born, naturally taking some inspiration from the National Basketball Association. They would even make their logo the Jumpman, the iconic logo affiliated with basketball legend Michael Jordan dunking the basketball. But for Never Broke Again, their version would be a man jumping up in the air holding a pistol. Youngboy's NBA crew wanted to go from pistol-toting stick-up kids to music industry heavy hitters being paid as much as professional <laughs> basketball players. Now, whether or not you like the name, there was been a no mic. sign that the meaning behind it was powerful. <laughs> and together, the Never Broke Again crew rallied around Youngboy, vowing to do whatever it took to take him to the top and make sure that they as a group... And you know what's cool? Okay, I don't know if you caught that, but... Uh, so... From what he just said, they rallied around. Okay, that group rallied around him to try to push him to the top. That's that's love and a half because you a lot of times you have people now who they're so concerned with self that then you know it's a rat race to get to the top. But for them to recognize, and now I, I, I haven't heard them, so I don't know about them. I'm just speaking off of just 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 a thought. But um, if they rallied around him 
to try to push him up. It's like they recognize he's the most talented one or he is something special about him. So they want to they want to help him push. I love that because what it shows is is what you can do when you band together behind a purpose. And it just he may have been been a centerpiece of that purpose, but it's beautiful that they could do that for him. So hats off to them, man. Never go broke again. So before we dive any deeper into the goings on of the Never Broke Again crew, let's just take a quick look at some of the main members of that collective so that you can follow everything that's about to go down in this long and complicated story. <laughs> Here's how to make over one This is like watching Malcolm X twice back to back. You know. First things first. <laughs> Shoot. When Young Boy is of course the face of Never Broke Again, the NBA collective, he is the label's leading rapper. And this Marcella. crew's bet on getting behind Young Boy's career is. would ultimately end up paying off handsomely. And with his crew's support, he would go on to become one of the biggest artists in the entire world. Then there's OG33, NBA's co-founder who started the group along with Young Boy and Montana. I started NBA, you know, like, it would be like Young Boy just was really like the main one who was rapping, like I don't really... Like, I don't really take rapping serious because, like, Young Boy really made me rap. <laughs> After 3-3's mother took Young Boy <laughs> on her own, they would build a bond as strong as blood brothers. We got the same mom. Okay. Like, like that. OG 3-3 is one of ten children, five kids from his mother's side, five from his father's side. But he's the oldest of all of them, which has led to him having a mature outlook and a real head on his shoulders, as he's almost had to act like a father figure for Young Boy and his other siblings. And there's ten kids all together, right? Yeah. Five from your mom yeah, five and five from your dad. dad. Yeah. <laughs> on both sides, I'm close with all my brothers and sisters because I'm the oldest, so it's just like... You're yeah, almost man. like a father figure, yeah. in a way. Yeah. Is that a lot of responsibility? Yeah. Yeah, for sure, but you know, that's just my role. So it's just, I took on my role. When Youngboy didn't really want to rap at first, it was 3-3 that pushed him and made sure that he stuck with it, dedicating his life to elevating Youngboy's career and keeping him on the right path. I see, I wish I could see about that. I wish I could see more about that. I didn't really want to rap at first, but then like once I really found out like he was going to be that, like I pushed him even more, more harder, harder. Hmm. Like I was getting a thought like- I, I don't know what he to, saw. Like, record company was doing, like I was getting a thousand CDs printed up. Like man, I, I didn't get some thousand CDs and really passed them out like this the man of a man is like, this that. It's three who pulls the strings and make the moves behind the scenes keeping the ship sailing smoothly and ensuring that the NBA collective runs efficiently. So does he, does he show up on, 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 on young boy stuff? Huh? Does he show up on his stuff? On young boy stuff? Like the business and management, like writing just, contracts. Just like, do you see him in the videos? Well, yeah, 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 nah, okay. probably on the monkeys on Hustlers. He started it. off, I was doing really okay. everything, you know. And young boy apparently even inspired OG3 to start making his own music because before, 3 was just mainly focused on pushing young boy's career. If it wasn't for YB walking me into the booth, I wouldn't even be <laughs> in the music because I was just mainly pushing him. It wasn't even about me. Now, 3-3 does enjoy rapping. That's beautiful. He's also a self-proclaimed CEO, and business is apparently where his passion lies. My main focus is it wouldn't be a career. I wouldn't choose rap as a career because I am a CEO and I love my position. But 3 has also gained a cult following of his own from being the head honcho of the NBA crew. And considering the dark reputation that has followed Youngboy over the many deadly years of his career, this has led to many internet fanboys speculating on whether OG3 is the true mastermind behind the violence playing out in Baton Rouge. With many Reddit posts circulating, constantly speculating on how many deaths that 3-3 might be responsible for, even sometimes referring to him as the Grim Threeper. But it's unclear if that is just straight trolling. Because in reality, OG3 has always tried to look out and take care of Youngboy and keep him on the straight and narrow, acting as the voice of reason in his life. And that's my right. brother. I always look out for him. I always take care of him. But like, I don't... I don't ever expect him to do nothing bad, but he don't he don't do it intentionally. It might be on accident, but <laughs> I always talk to him and enforce that like we shouldn't be doing a lot of things and you know he listens. So it's like I always was that type of person. Right. I always was that kind of like the voice of reason for when he gets a little hot headed, you're like so that to help calm down. He's probably listening to you and he ain't trying to listen to a lot of random people. Yeah, he ain't gonna listen to nobody. If it ain't me. Then you've got Montana. According to a Billboard article profiling Youngboy, Kyle Montana Clybourne found Youngboy's music early on YouTube. And in the absence of a father figure or any real older male role model in his family, it seems like Montana assumed a kind of father figure role for Youngboy in the early stages of his life and career, giving him guidance on how to survive the gritty streets of North Baton Rouge. In fact, in the song Lonely Child from his October 2019 project AI Youngboy 2, Youngboy admits that he has been missing his father, and as a result, he actually wow. 
Montana would help co-found the Never Broke Again label along with Youngboy okay. and 33, with interviews explaining that in the early days of NBA, Youngboy would be sleeping on an air mattress at Montana's house, at a time when Montana played the role Boy. of manager, booking agent, and financier, driving Youngboy all around the South to perform for between $500 and $1,500 a show to build his fan base in the early days. However, there's always been confusion over exactly who Youngboy's manager specifically okay. is, and to be fair, it has changed over the years. For a period of time, Youngboy's manager was a man by the name of Big Dump. Sometimes referred to as Youngboy's manager or agent, it was Dump who was there for Youngboy yeah. during the most turbulent years of his come up. And Dump then, end up losing his life I remember other rappers talking about him. As a direct result of the deadly streak yeah, between these two warring Baton Rouge okay. gangsters. But we'll go much deeper into that situation later on in the story. Another person who All played right. That makes sense. That makes sense. Wow. That was gonna start okay. right there, man. Now, this, this, it may not be 100% accurate, but it does give, at least for me, it gives a lot of a lot of color to the whole to the whole picture. So, um, yeah, that's 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 deep. We're gonna finish this. Hey, subscribe for part two, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's deep. If you're new, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, follow Instagram. Give me the 20k on Instagram, 200k on here. If you ain't wearing no socks, subscribe, man. Um, there's been there's been several comments, lots lots of different comments about uh, folks saying saying stuff like uh, um, basically how they wish they had a pops like me, and I appreciate that. I really do because that 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 that. That's a compliment beyond compliments, and I really, I promise, I appreciate that. Um, at the same time, I'm gonna just just say this and close out with this. Um, one of the things, at least for me, is that uh, I take pride in trying to be open enough to learn from any and everybody. Um, um, and so one of the things that inspires me is watching my kids be inspired as well. So I learned a lot from watching them and just in a, I guess in a, <laughs> just, just, just being honest uh, and just being real, I, I, I want y'all to know how much I appreciate Josh is just being my son, man. Uh, he's a, there's a lot of stuff I could say, but at the end of the day, he's he, he's one of my guys. I love all my kids, man. They mean, they mean everything to me. And because I don't want to have an allergic reaction, I'm saying peace. Love y'all, man. Y'all be saying peace. <laughs>